Understanding what happens with fat in our body gives us the upper hand and the first step on how to eliminate it, how to maintain a healthy body weight that you are happy with and to keep a healthy life long term. There is a conceptual error that if you were ever overweight and you were able to lose that weight, those cells that store the fat do not disappear. And it's claimed that they only reduce in size. This statement implies and assumes several things. First, that if you were ever overweight and were able to lose weight, it's going to be easier for you to gain that weight, that weight back than for a person who was never overweight. The second aspect is that if those cells are not eliminated and are stored in the same part of the body, whenever I eat junk, it's going to be more likely to gain that weight and accumulate fat around those areas because of those cells. But this is only a conceptual error because the adipose tissue or the areas where fat tends to accumulate means that those cells will always remain alive. Truly, this depends on your hormones the areas where fat tends to accumulate is going to depend on hormones that are on balance. For example, estrogen will cause overaccumulation of fat around the thighs or insulin will make it accumulate in the abdomen area. If it's hormonal imbalance, on top of this, we add a slow metabolism. This will increase the tendency for me to accumulate fat. But my point is that if you change just one thing, you can eliminate these cells that accumulate fat or even better to be replaced by tissue that is going to increase your metabolism. And that is what happens when we change adipose tissue for brown tissue. Brown tissue is activated with body temperature, helping us to produce heat. For example, this heat is produced by burning fat and utilizing it for energy production. We could even replace this tissue, although it's more difficult for stem cells, but the factor that we will need to change in order to achieve this does not have to do with eating less carbs or more fat, although it does matter, but this is a matter of managing inflammation in the body. And the issue is that if the body has more inflammation, the body becomes more resistant to insulin. Therefore, you will have the tendency to accumulate more insulin than other people that had the same meal that you did. And it will obviously make you accumulate more fat because of this aspect. Whenever your body responds or reacts to insulin, your body will reduce the speed of your metabolism. This implies that you will burn less calories per day than other people. For this simple fact that you're feeding those cells or keeping them alive with an excessive amount of calories that you're consuming, essentially feeding this insulin with excessive amount of calories. This is not only bad for your weight or total body fat percentage, but it will have a negative effect on your overall life expectancy. Therefore, to lose weight in the form that is both sustainable and healthy, you have to lower your inflammation. If you've thought about losing body fat, you probably ask yourself, what happens to body fat and do we actually burn fat? What we know as burning fat is what most people refer to as fat, turning fat into energy or body heat. Others might say that it can be turned into muscle or to be eliminated as fecal matter. The truth of what is actually happening is that we eliminate fat as we breathe. And yet, even if it sounds weird to you, we excel fat. This is important because understanding the mechanism of how we eliminate fat can help us increase that effect. When we have an accumulation of fat in the body, we have it in the form of triglycerides. These triglycerides are mainly composed of atoms with oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. So when we oxidize fat in order to break them down and utilize them, we need oxygen, hence the word oxidation. But you probably heard that it's not always good and this can generate free radicals. But let's do some basic math. To oxidize 22 pounds of fat, we will need to inhale 64 pounds of oxygen. The total between 22 and 64 will give us 86 pounds. And the total amount needs to come out out of the body one way or another. One thing to keep in mind is that this happens step by step. This does not happen overnight. The body needs time to do all these steps that I'm talking about. Out of these 86 pounds that need to be eliminated, 61 pounds 
that which is close to three quarters of the total amount will be eliminated as carbon dioxide which if you remember carbon dioxide is the gas that we excel now the last quarter left is to be eliminated as water and that could either be eliminated as sweat urine or even water in the fecal matter in a normal day with a very small amount of physical activity such as a person that works in an office you'll be able to excel at a normal breathing rate one third of a pound of carbon if you exercise then you are going to accelerate the amount that you breathe out and this is obviously a positive thing because it means that you're going to eliminate that excess of carbon within your body at a 20 percent increase rate with these numbers you could probably figure out that in 65 days you could lose that excess of 22 pounds of overweight but the problem is that it's what we eat and if you specifically eat lots of carbohydrates these carbohydrates are going to give you new carbon to your body which changes the numbers completely and this is where we can see all of the foods that make us increase in weight are carbohydrates these are the same substances that we need to get rid of whenever we're losing fat the point of this video is not to make you breathe a lot or make you think that simply by breathing more is going to make you lose more weight a lot faster but instead to help you understand the mechanism of weight loss that your body goes through understanding this will help you avoid errors when it comes to eating and second to understand why some foods affect us and affect our weight a lot more than others carbohydrates being composed of carbon atoms are exactly what our body needs to get rid of in order for us to lose weight on top of that they also stimulate insulin and prevents you from losing the cells that make you more likely to gain weight in the future all this information is important to understand because certain factors that you probably consider were probably affecting you also everyone thinks that eating better whenever they're looking to lose weight but most people wouldn't think of inflammation as an effect that can decrease and affect your metabolism therefore reducing the total body inflammation either by following a diet that's meant to reduce that or a form of cleanse or at the bare minimum supplements that can help you reduce that inflammation which would be omega-3 or turmeric and obviously reducing the high levels of insulin which naturally happen as a consequence of eating foods with naturally high levels of sugar and you know which foods are those and like always if you found this video helpful please hit the like button leave us a comment and let us know what else you like us to cover and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video see you on the next one